Hey everyone, it's me Antonio here and we're here with uh, one of the newest projects I've been working on. It's a um, uh, Evolution 1090 uh, millimeter hexacopter. You can see there's six motors here. I'm running uh, the T motors. I'm getting you know pretty good performance out of them. It's the uh, 4014 330 kV. Uh, you know they don't overheat. I've maxed or not maxed out but the most I've tried in this airframe has been uh, 10 no, it was actually nine pounds close to 10 pounds and it lifted it up. No problem. I'm for the uh, controller board I'm running the Wukong uh, I mean Wukong kind of speaks for itself. It's a great unit very smooth uh, Very stable especially when you start adding payload. Uh, I have the newest firmware in there the update the 5.24 which is supposed to help out with I guess heavier uh, heavier setups and so on and uh, doing good so far with that uh, for ESCs, I'm running uh, 40 amp opto RC timers uh, with the uh, newest firmware, the Flash firmware. And that on its own is doing really well. They're really responsive. I notice my gains don't have to be as, as uh, high as they would be on other speed controls. Uh, just because I guess the, the, they're so fast. And um, for battery here, I'm using the Pulse. I'm using the Pulse 10,025C and uh, six cell and I mean with this thing I can get uh, with no payload as it sits currently I can get easily about let me strap this on I can get about 20 a little bit over 20 minute flight time uh, with this pack with a uh, uh, pull six cell 5000 I'm getting about 12 13 minutes and um, with a payload I've been able to get uh, with a red epic I've, I've simulated the weight of a red epic and I am able to get about, I believe it was 17 minutes, 16, it was about 16, 17 minutes out of it and really no issues whatsoever. Uh, so this battery is, is, is kind of my go-to battery for uh, big hex frames. I say anywhere from about nine, 800 millimeter and on, you can probably mount up a, a, a 10,000 milliamp. Gives you more flight time, you know, you don't want to make it too heavy, but if you got a big enough frame, this will easily, I mean, for this, uh, 1090 frame it's more than enough uh, octo guys can easily use this, this pack so i really recommend that pack uh, for radio system it's a 14 sg the receiver that, that comes with it uh, other than that i'm running the evolution uh, two axis gimbal right here yeah i kind of ignore that little piece of uh, towel i have there that's so in flight it's not dangling there i just have it uh, being held uh, currently this is a brushless gimbal with the pancake style motors uh, so far had pretty good luck. I've done some very basic testing with it and I love it so far. Uh, these motors seem to have more than enough power. I think uh, the max weight you can get on them and, and, and get away with it is about, I'd say about seven, eight pounds. Uh, if you're really good at tuning the gimbal, you can probably do nine pounds. Later, I do plan on adding the third axis. I just didn't have enough money at the time to, to buy the third axis. So I got uh, currently two axis and uh, really nice. It's using the Alex, I believe it's the Alex Moss board. It's a really nice board. It's really smooth. I love it, really tunable. I believe that one's closed source, so I'm not sure. Uh, for props, it's a copy of the DJI S8000 blades. I think they're uh, 10 by five, or sorry, 15 by five or 15 by six, as far as the blades go. So here I'm gonna do a quick flight demonstration. I'm gonna have the camera guy here hold the camera for me. And hopefully not put his finger in the way. There we go. Here's the middle. Okay. Okay. Your finger's in the way. Finger. Yeah, just yeah, with one. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so here we go, guys. We're gonna do. Uh, we'll start it off with some basic flying, a little bit of forward flight, and then we'll get it a little bit aggressive. Uh, for you guys that are doing aero photography, you might not get as aggressive with it, but just to show you guys um, that the frame is able to do it. And I think the last thing I'll demonstrate is a, uh, what do you call it, a return, a return to home fail safe. Actually what I'm doing, I'm going to re reinitiate it because I forgot, I think I started it back there. Yeah, I think I initiated it by a light pole that's over here. And last thing you want to do is have it return to home and hit the light pole. So I put it out a little bit and we'll test out the return to home, which is, like I said, going to be the last thing. 
I'm going to be testing. Okay, so we're waiting for that green light to initiate. Yeah, but uh, so far in my testing, I've, I really like this frame. It's a clean looking frame. Uh, Aeropixels.com, uh, you can get your hands on one. Uh, they're nicely built. The finish on the carbon is absolutely amazing. And the thing I like the best about this frame is that it's made and designed here in the US. Not only here in the US, but here in California. Um, and one thing I absolutely love about that is if in the future, I do want maybe another plate for a different camera or add another plate for more electronics or whatever the case is, I can call a manufacturer and have them custom make me a plate, you know, without having to contact overseas in China, wait a few weeks, you know, the shipping's gonna kill you and so on and so forth. So I really uh, recommend this frame. I've loved it so far. Here we go, guys. Right now we're flying in uh, GPS. We got a breeze blowing about, I'd say, a good seven uh, mile an hour gust. So that's my hand completely off the sticks. Let me get it out of ground effect a little bit, because that tends to help out a lot. So once again, we got about a seven mile an hour gust. And here, hands off the sticks. Holding very nicely. So now what I'm gonna do, is do some forward flight. Uh, keep it nice and smooth, nice and steady. Right now we're in uh, GPS mode. For some shots I've noticed uh, when I do some gigs, I notice it's better in attitude um, than attitude GPS. Just because when you let go of the stick in GPS, it stops itself. And I'm going to put it in attitude right now. When you let go of the stick, it continues to drift. As you can see, it levels out, but the drift continues. Uh, which is sometimes what you want. So here we're going to fly in attitude mode right now. Just nice and smooth. Keep it a little bit closer to the camera since it's hard for you guys to see it. We don't have much to do on this uh, iPhone 5. So here we're still in attitude mode. I'm gonna switch into GPS right now. Do maybe a little climb out. So we're gonna go full power right now, climb out. And just for you guys out there that, that uh, are familiar with NASA, uh, DJI NASA and, and Wukong, when you go full power in GPS or attitude mode, it's not actually 100% power. It's just a certain climb out rate that is being delivered to the motor. So it's not actually full power. Um, if you actually want full power, you have to put it in manual mode. And let me tell you, manual mode, it's fun to fly, you know, it, it's, it's you flying it, but you get crazy power when you go full power. So here we go in uh, GPS mode, punch out full power in one, two, three. That's full power, coming back down. I'm gonna switch out of GPS mode, put in attitude, and let's start doing a little bit of aggressive flying. I've flown a, a few frames out there in the industry. I don't want to say any names to put anybody down, but you know, you get some weird flight characteristics when doing certain maneuvers. And I mean, this thing, you can, you know, mix the sticks any way you want, and it gets, you know, no real bad tendencies. It's just a really solid frame. Really simple build is another thing I like, and uh, not only the build but the spacing between the two planes. Really yeah, one thing I like is the spacing between the frames, and what that does, it enables you to really pretty much hide all your electronics. I mean, you can put it on in between the frames and, and, and so on. So. What we're going to do here
here next, I'm gonna take it not ridiculously far and the reason I'm not gonna take it super far um, for the return to home is just because they'll take forever for it to come back home. So, there we go guys. Right here we're gonna perform 100% return to home. And I'm gonna hit the fail safe when it gets far enough. As you guys can see, it's pretty far now. So I'm gonna hit the, I'm gonna hit the switch. Okay, I'm gonna man the camera now. So my camera guy is no longer gonna man the camera. We're gonna come back and put the radio down there. And we're gonna wait. I'm gonna get away from the from the radio. You guys can see the radio's still there. I'm walking away from it, and she's on her way back home. Let me try and see if I can even. Oh, she's right about right at the top of my finger. Right. Oh, where am I? Right there, the top of my finger. She's coming. And what she's gonna do for you guys that aren't familiar with uh, DJI boards, NASA, Wukong, none of that. Not only as you guys saw is she returning home, uh, but she will land herself. Typically the descent takes a little while, it overshoots a little bit, and then it tends to return back. Um, but you guys will see here, in, in, I, it should be about uh, maybe two, uh, about a minute and a half, two minutes, depending on how high you are. Um, so while it's coming down, I can explain more of the fail safe. So it's pretty much the switch I hit. And what it does, no matter where you are, you hit the switch, it will climb about 30 meters, 30 to 60 meters, and then it'll come back uh, from where it took off. And let me show you guys the wind here, how it's blowing. You can see there, it's easily gusting about, I'd say a good nine miles an hour just picked up. And you can see, she's still on her path down the radio, right over there. And she's still coming down. And typically, with my testing, it tends to land within five feet of where uh, you plug in the battery. So it's pretty accurate. It's actually going to land. Yeah, it's actually going to be right on, actually, this time. So there, radio is still down. Radio is right there. And she's coming down all on her own. And we have touchdown. So we have just had touchdown. So there, radio is still over there. And, um, man, I mean, this thing pretty much speaks for itself. I, I'm absolutely in love with this frame. I really like it. Uh, I want to give a big uh, thanks out to uh, Kavi from uh, Aeropixels for hooking up with this frame, as well as the electronics for this thing. And I also want to give uh, a shout out to uh, HeliDirect, uh, which is, if you guys may know, is a distributor of Pulse batteries. I really thank them for getting these batteries over to me. They've performed, you know, I mean, it's more than I'd ever want. Uh, no issues whatsoever. Flight times are absolutely amazing. Uh, for you guys that maybe don't need the 10,000 milliamp hour, maybe, you know, it's too much weight, you don't need that flight time, whatever the case is, I'd recommend either stepping down to a 5,000 milliamp battery or a 4,400 uh, without any issues. So uh, be sure to check out helidirect.com for their Pulse batteries. And also be sure to take a look at uh, aeropixels.com. As always, thanks for watching.